Hello everyone. I hope everyone is doing good and all is well. Today's chat is going to be about the horrific acts committed by the White League against black voters on November the 3rd, 1874 in Eufaula, Alabama. Or in other words, the election massacre of 1874. Now, initially, seven lives were lost and more than 75 people were injured. But sadly, not long after the massacre, many of the injured people did not survive. So many lives were lost, according to the reports. And not only were so many lives lost, the Republican Party was also eliminated in Barber County and African Americans lost their voting rights for 90 years. Now, it's a tragedy what happened in Uvala. And with that being said, let's chat. Uvala, Alabama. Now, before we get into today's chat, you all know I must give you a little backstory. Now, in the beginning, several Native American tribes lived in Eufaula before their land was invaded by the white man. Now, Eufaula was home to tribes such as the Actahuches, Uches, and Eufaulas, whom the town was named after, and I do apologize if I said those names wrong. Now, Eufaula, it went through many name changes over time, and the white people began settling in Eufaula around 1823. Now, the Native Americans, they allowed the white men to settle on the land, and they allowed them to settle there because the white men came with fair promises. But it wasn't long before the white man began taking advantage of the Native Americans and tensions began brewing. And the white people, they began to take Native American possessions and they forced the Native Americans to leave many of their clearings. So it took little time before the Native Americans became fed up with the white people. Now, the issues with the white people had become so bad, a few of the white men, they sympathized with the Native Americans, and they gave them advice about filing an appeal with the general government in Washington for protection and redress. Now, the government, they went ahead and sent troops in to assist the Native Americans and order the white people out of the town. And in July of 1827, the troops destroyed the white people's growing crops. They ordered the white people out and they burned down the house of a white man named Pew. Now, the events that took place are known as the Intruders War. And the white people, they left the town, but they didn't go far. And they stayed out of the ways of the troops. And it didn't take long before a treaty was arranged and the government, they allowed the white men to buy claims from the Native Americans. And in 1832, Treaty of Cassetto, it forced the Native Americans to give up their ancestral claims to the land. And around about the same time, the town was renamed to Irwinton after General William Irwin. Now, the town's original name of Eufaula, it was restored in 1843. And this was only because when the town was renamed to Irwinton, the town's mail was continuously being misdirected to a town in Georgia, also named Irwinton. And now that you all you know, know a little backstory of the town's history, let's get into today's chat. Now, of course, we know when the white people settled in Eufaula, they brought along their slaves. And more and more black people, they began settling in the town as the years passed. And eventually, there were more black people within the town than white people. 
And during the time of the Civil War, racism and white supremacy was at an all-time high within Eufaula. So, of course, they supported the Confederacy. Now, remember, the Confederacy was for slavery and they did not want it to end. And if you're not familiar with the Confederacy or the Union, on the other hand, please check out my previous videos. I talk about all of this and a lot of different great black history facts and those, you know, the shameless plug. But let's continue. Um, once the Civil War ended, black citizens still faced racism, oppression and white supremacy was at an all time high. And once emancipation and ratification of the 15th Amendment gave black men voting rights, things got much worse. And this is what led to why we're all here today. The Election Massacre of 1874. Now, once black men gained voting rights, Barber County's new black electorate it was empowered to end white supremacist officials' control over the county. And black voters, they were beginning to take to the polls. And in 1870, they helped to elect Elias Kyles, a white candidate who supported Reconstruction. And if you're not familiar with Reconstruction or the Reconstruction period, you can check out my other videos or continue to watch my new series over slavery because we will be discussing it later in that series. Now, four years later, in 1874, when Kyle's ran for re-election, the white citizens were determined to make sure he would not win, no matter the cost. And as the election drew closer and closer, the white citizens became more and more violent against the black citizens. Now, white employers, they began openly firing black voters if they intended to vote for cows. And they stated and they started rather, I'm sorry, a rumor that black citizens were planning to violently drive white voters from the polls on November the 3rd. And they created this rumor as an excuse to stockpile guns near the polling sites. And when Kyle's discovered what the white citizens were up to, he tried to alert the state and federal officials of the danger. Now, Kyle's, he went to the attorney general and federal troops that were stationed in Eufaula. Now, the attorney, attorney general, he rejected Kyle's in a pretty harsh manner. Pretty easy and quickly. And the captain of the federal troops, A.S. get he claimed it would violate his orders to use federal soldiers to protect the black voters. Now, the black citizens, they knew all about the white people's big stock of guns near the polls. And they knew the attorney general and federal troops refused to protect them. But they did not let this stop them. The black people were determined to express their rights to vote. So on voting day, November the 3rd, 1874, hundreds of African Americans marched down to the voting polls unarmed and determined to vote. Some of the black people were arrested immediately and taken to jail under claims that they had committed fraud. And one black man, he was forced into an alley by several white men and threatened to be arrested if he did not vote against civil rights. Now, according to Captain A.S. Deguet, remember, he was the captain of the federal troops stationed at Eufaula at the time who said federal troops protecting black voters was a violation of his orders. Now, Captain to get to get, he watched the horrible massacre from his hotel window and to get stated that an altercation broke out. You know, it broke out outside the polling station between a black Republican, Mr. Miles Lawrence and a white Democrat, Charles E. Goodwin. Now, to get, 
He stated that things quickly escalated when one of Goodwin's men stabbed Lawrence in the shoulder. Now, other reports state that things escalated when a shot was fired by a white man. But, of course, the white people swore a black man fired that shot. Now, regardless if it was the shot or the stabbing that caused things to escalate, both things still occurred and things took a turn for the worse. And once things escalated, according to Captain DeGette, the white men shouted, Fall in, Company A. Fall in, Company B. They shouted this before retrieving the guns they had stocked near the voting polls. The armed white men gathered in the streets and in the upstairs windows of surrounding buildings and they opened fire on the crowd of black citizens at the voting polls. And within minutes, over 500 shots were fired. And according to Captain DeGette, there were so many shots fired, it created a large cloud of dust. And once that cloud cleared, seven black men had lost their lives and more than 75 other black people were injured. Now, most of the injured people were said to have not survived their injuries. So dozens of black lives were actually lost once it was all said and done, according to the reports. A large number of black people who had not yet voted were able to escape. And one of the black men who survived the attack, he stated that once the shooting stopped, the white mob cheered, Hoorah for the white man's party. The white mob weren't finished yet, though. Later that day, the white mob broke into another county polling station in Spring Hill, Alabama, and they attacked Elias Kyles and his son, William. Now, remember, Kyles, he was the white candidate up for re-election that the black people previously voted for in the past when they first received their voting rights. Now, when the white mob attacked Kyles and his son, Kyles' son, William, who was 16 at the time, William lost his life. And the mob also destroyed the voting ballot box and burned the ballots inside the county's polling station. Now, the newspapers, they quickly printed that the violence was a riot, as they did often when it came to many massacres in history. Now, the papers, they also praised the attack. They printed, big riot today, several killed and many others hurt, some badly, but none of our friends among them. The white man's goose hangs high. Three cheers for you follow. Now later, a congressional representative characterized the attack as a massacre. And a congressional investigation was conducted. And the massacre also received national attention. But all of this was done only because William a 16-year-old white boy had lost his life during the massacre. Now, the identities of the white mob members responsible for the massacre, whom had also taken black lives during the massacre, their identities were known. But no white person was ever convicted. Instead, Hillard Miles, a black man, was imprisoned and convicted for perjury after he identified members of the white mob. And decades later, one of the white mob members, Braxton Bragg Comer, one whom Miles had identified to have taken part in the massacre, he was elected governor of Alabama. So the massacre, it Pretty much, you know, it proved to black people and the black residents of Eufaula, Alabama, that exercising their new legal rights 
especially voting rights, came with a deadly consequence. And they could not depend on protection from the authorities. So the black people, they became too afraid to vote. And in 1874, 12,000 black people had voted in Ufala. But after the massacre, in 1876, only 10 black people voted in Ufala. And the Republican Party, it was pretty much eliminated also. I mean, at this time, the Republican Party was the party of majority of the black people because it supported black civil rights. Now, the Democratic Party, on the other hand, at this time, it was dominated by white supremacy. And African-Americans, they lost their voting rights in Ufala for nearly 90 years And they weren't restored until 1964 with the passage of the 1964 Civil Rights Act. Now, many elected county positions in Barber County are still held by white people today. And in 2016, Barber County had the highest voter purge rate in the United States. Now, voter purge, this is when the election officials, they purge or remove names from the voter registration rolls or they challenge the voters eligibility to vote, you know, do the address or just some minor, minute little detail. Now, and also in Ufala today, this Confederate monument stands tall in the same spot the election massacre of 1874 took place. Now, they did put up a historical marker within Barber County around about 1979 as well. But this marker, it mentions the massacre as a riot. And it mainly speaks of Kyle's and his son, William, who lost his life with little regard for the many African-American lives that were lost. Well, that brings us to the end of today's chat. What do you think about today's chat? Why do you feel the authorities refuse to help the black citizens? And why do you feel they allow voter suppression to take place for so long? And tell me your thoughts in the comments below. Please like the video. Please share the video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, peace, love, and blessings.